Why cancer and why Baylor? Dallas Hope is probably, I'm not kidding, it's probably the best project we've ever, ever done. Why Dallas Hope? Why Baylor? Because when you get a great story, uh, you know as a, as a former reporter yourself, there's something about great stories that are just so compelling. And when you get the kind of access that we got to be able to go in to three complete strangers you don't know. The day we met Michelle Burnt, she found out that she had cancer and we're in the room with her. From the very moment we started doing this, I said, oh my gosh. This is the most incredible access we've ever had. It's something you dream about your whole career, and it all came about so quickly. It was absolutely fantastic. Did a lot of this project, was there surprises for you? Because going into it, you always have this, uh, maybe this preconceived notion that, okay, well, mm -hmm. this is kind of how it's going to go, and then it just happens the way it is. I mean, did a, did a lot of it surprise you? The thing that was most surprising was the way the stories jumped off the screen because you don't typically get to go home with the patient and hear what happens at night. We were able to give our patients, at least some of them, an, an iPad to take home and do a confessional and tell us about what they were going through. Michelle specifically, her stories at home on the iPad are some of the best reporting we did and we didn't have to do anything except hand her the iPad. So it's really uh, a lot of techniques are involved here, a lot of technology that we were able to use to help our storytelling and at the end of the day the thing we want to do more than anything is tell compelling stories. There are moments when you are in a, in a situation with someone where you don't want to say, can we come in and shoot that? The day that Cherise had uh, her bone marrow transplant, she was in the bathroom most of the morning getting sick, and we were there ready to shoot with our cameras. And you can imagine what that's like for a family, and for her, it was very difficult to have the cameras there. So yes, at those moments, we decide we're going to pull back a little bit and not show some of the things that nobody should see anyway. So we say 100% access, we mean 100% of access of the things that we think people should, should watch. We had a situation where we interviewed one man by the name of Roger Hurt who had just lost his wife, had just been told that day that she was terminal and we spoke with him and he agreed to be interviewed. He then invited us into the room to shoot his wife who uh, had just been told the news and my partner Kevin Spivey said we can't shoot that. We cannot shoot that woman in that situation. It's a matter of respect, human dignity and so yes yeah, sometimes your you know instinct takes over and you decide to pull back at the at what we think are the appropriate times. Now this is called Dallas Hope but it sounds like you and everybody else will learn a lot about strength, about people's strength. What, what did you learn about the strength of people during the worst times of their life? For me personally, it's actually been a great lesson because, uh, you know, you put yourself in those situations and you think, how would I handle this? And to see the way our patients handled adversity, to see the way that Sharice fought through the the trauma is the best way I can describe it of having no immune system getting ready for her bone marrow transplant to see Michelle suffering through her chemotherapy and feeling like she couldn't go on another day to say that can't impact you and that it doesn't change you and realize that what you're going through is nothing compared to what these people are going through it is a powerful thing to watch and I I am in awe of these patients and I think it I think it needs to be said that we shouldn't be celebrating a film celebrating a documentary here we should be celebrating these three patients who had the courage to step up and allow us into their private lives and really do something that's going to last long after you know the film is done because to an outsider you know, we, we've all seen the walks, we've all seen the t-shirts, and we've all seen, you know, that camaraderie, but you don't often see this aspect of it. You don't see all the work, the pain, and the effort that goes into it. You know, we've seen documentaries before even of, of dying cancer patients, but the show is called Dallas Hope because two out of three people that get cancer live. Where is that documentary? Where is the story of the people that live and how they fight to live? That's a story that we don't think we've seen and we'd like to be able to say that we're telling that story in a powerful, authentic way. The other thing is that nobody told us how to do this story. There was nobody from Baylor giving us direction on what we could shoot or couldn't shoot. As filmmakers, we had complete 100% access to stories. In fact, we were absolutely shocked some days when nobody was telling us or around us as minders telling us where to go or what to do. We literally worked independently, Kevin Spivey and myself, the two of us with all access to the hospital. We're like kids in a candy store, able to tell the story that we wanted to tell. 
How did it impact you personally to, to watch that unfold? Well, for me, it was uh, uh, really difficult because, you know, I, I of course, lost uh, my grandmother to cancer. I know how much you know, people suffer through these kinds of situations. I've, I've been in situations before where I've told other stories. My father was in the Bataan Death March and we did a story about his experiences in World War II. But nothing really prepared me for the visceral feeling that you get when you're dealing with a young mother with two children, dealing with the fact that she no longer has her breasts and how is her husband going to treat her? Is she still going to be loved by her husband? And her willingness to open up and talk about these intimate things with us, it was it was incredible. It is by far the most compelling project that I've ever done and I, I just hope that the viewers understand that we try to tell the story with compassion and with love because I think that's the most important thing that, that this sh story reveals is that to go through this you have to have a support system. You have to have great doctors and nurses here at Baylor but you also have to have that family around you and that's I think what uh, what uh, is most exciting is watching the way the support system came together for these patients. How was it to work with something so unpredictable? Because, I mean, anything could have really happened. I mean, these patients, they could have died. They couldn't, you know, it, something horrible could have gone wrong in this case, and it didn't, but you couldn't have predicted any of that. Well, I think we were, we were lucky from the very first day to be able to cast Michelle Burnt as our, as our first uh, patient in this, what we hope will be a, a long-term series, is incredible because Michelle was made for television, made for Hollywood. She's beautiful. She carries all her emotions right on the vest. She's willing to tell you anything she's thinking, and you, you just cheer and follow along with her story. Then you have Sharice Daniels, who's silent, quiet, but oh, so incredibly brave herself. She was probably near death before she found out she could get this bone marrow transplant. And then you have the strong male character in Bill Bradford, an executive with Halliburton and Dresser Industries, a corporate executive who also was willing to allow, imagine, a corporate executive allowing us into his private life to tell the story of his fight with follicular cancer, a, a cancer of his lymph nodes. And so he's involved in a clinical trial that could have lasting ramifications years from now. And so, oh my gosh, we're so incredibly lucky to have this, uh, this cast of characters to, to share with all our viewers. What do you think people will take away from it all then? I, I think people are just going to be taken away by the emotion. When, when all is said and done, uh, I believe that we remember what we feel a lot longer than we remember what we know. We're going to know that these people had great care and, and, and great advice and they received the best possible medicine they could get. But in the end, you're going to be moved by the people. These could be your relatives. This could be you. And when you put yourself in these shoes and see these stories, you're going to love it. What did you learn about it? Well, I think the thing that I learned is that uh, you know, we are a step away from being one of those patients. And when you put yourself in those shoes, you say, how would I react in these situations? Would I be brave enough to handle adversity like that? And what I've learned from these situations is it's all about the power of the human mind. Your mind can control what you can do more than anybody realizes. Being positive about things, having hope and not optimism, and also being able to be able to to see that, you know, these kinds of situations require a strength that may require something that we call faith. I'm not asking everybody to believe in God or to have faith. I'm just saying that for those who do, uh, you talk to the nurses and the doctors here, medically trained, and they'll say faith seems to help quite a bit in these situations. And I hope that that, that comes through in, in this portrayal as well because we're not inventing that. That's what the patients are telling us.